All right, let's go over uh, crude oil real quick. And uh, for the reaction we got off of uh, gold, gold is uh, in a free fall from our HVA, stopped to the exact tick of 12.1350, all the way down to 12.0750. My HVA volume profile stopped in its track. So you can see the reaction we had for ADP. Uh, we have non-farm payrolls coming out this Friday at 8.30 should be some big action in the markets from the reaction off the ADP number. So I'm anticipating some big movement in all markets this Friday with the uh, non-farm payrolls. That's the biggest economic event of the month. It's the first Friday of every single month at 8.30, and we will be prepared to look to buy and sell break retest trades on Friday. Uh, today, uh, look at the news events. We have crude oil inventories at 10.30. Uh, let's just take a look at it real quick. I want you to go to forexfactory.com. It's a free little service for you um, every Sunday. It's a calendar you can print out. I only look at the red impact numbers. I do not look at the yellow or the orange impact numbers. The red impact numbers are the high impact numbers. That's the numbers you want to concentrate on. That's what can move the markets for us. So every Sunday, go to Forex Factory, put a filter in by looking at only at the red impact numbers against the USD. That will directly affect gold, crude, S&P 500, Dow Minis, Russell 2000, et cetera, all the futures that we trade. So uh, forexfactory.com is the best way to do it. And uh, look against the USD, look at the red impact numbers. You can see the ADP came out at 815 this morning. And um, just a reaction off that, that gold's having, I anticipate we're going to have a great pre-news trade coming up on Friday before the news even gets released. Uh, so we want to watch out for that. We have crude oil inventories coming out this afternoon. Uh, uh, not this afternoon, this morning at 10.30. Uh, and this afternoon, we have the FOMC statement. Uh, remember, the trading hours we like to trade, you want to get in here at 7.30, no later than 7.45. A lot of times, you're firing off two, a couple trades before 9 o'clock in the morning. And typically, we can be done by 9 a.m. So uh, our trading times are 7.30 to 10.30 Eastern. That's a sweet spot in the market. Uh, if you're an early morning trader, 2 a.m. until around 5.30 a.m. is another sweet spot. Uh, but mainly 7.45, latest login, and you want to trade uh, typically to 9 a.m. The first hour and 15 minutes can typically be done in the first hour, hour and 15 minutes, three out of five trading days of the week uh, with the system. Uh, you do have a nice uh, reaction all the way to 10.30. Then in the afternoon, if you want to come in between 1.30 and 2.30, you see a nice little reaction into the crude oil pit close in all markets. And that's when we have the FOMC statement uh, coming out uh, today at 2, 2, uh, 2 p.m. So just remember, go ahead and uh, go ahead and remember to log in to Forex Factory every Sunday before we open the room up at 6 p.m. at night. And you can... Uh, you can see what the big numbers coming out are at. And you do not want to be long or short seconds into the news. Um, you know, I mean, uh, minutes into news, we like to close the position out around three to four minutes before the news released, open it back up uh, 15 to 20 seconds after the news released on a break retest. Let's go over the setups this morning. We've got a big reaction in gold right now, but let's go over crude. Similar trade yesterday. Um, that we had this, uh, in crude oil. <clears throat> if you look at crude oil, the main uh, uh, chart that we look at is market profile. Market profile has been around since 1985. Uh, price profile, volume profile has been around since 1994. The main one that we look at is volume profile. That's that solid red, blue, and green line. These levels our volume profile, the solid blue line is the most volume that's been traded in that instrument for the morning session, actually since uh, after midnight. And it lets you know exactly where all the hedge funds, prop firms, banks, institutional traders, all the volume is present. And these levels are derived, the red level is the high value area and the green level is the low value area. And those levels are derived from that blue line. That blue line is major support and resistance and is a major launching point. That's how we had a huge $500 potential trade yesterday on crude oil in the morning. 
right off. It stopped at the exact tick on control point and it launched right from that point. So we want to make sure we, we remember to play off these levels first. Once these levels overlap, our dotted levels, our dotted levels are price profile, the small dots are longer term profile. Once they retest, I mean they conflue within a couple ticks of these profiles, you have what's called confluence. You're seeing that profile is overlapping profile. So the best way I like to do it when you first log in is I like to look at market profile first. We have three charts in front of you. We have the black chart, this white chart, and this gray chart. This gray chart in your far right means absolutely nothing until we're ready to pull the trigger. When we're ready to pull the trigger to enter, we look at this gray chart. That shows the order imbalance between the bid and the ask, the internals of the market. But we don't care about the internals of the market on whether we want to pull the trigger on a buy or sell unless we're retesting market profile. So the methodology is very simple. We're going to let market profile set up the trade first, and then we're going to let our market delta, our far right chart, pull us in the trade with an order imbalance. And that's how we're going to do things in the room. That's how it's been working for well over 31 years now. The same exact setup for 31 years continues to crank it out. Now what you're seeing is these three charts are the market internals. These are not lagging stochastics lagging MAC, it's not a moving average convergence divergence, it's not a lagging indicator. These are leading indicators. It's actually showing you internally on the black chart what's going on with the volume in the market. It's actually internally what's showing what's going on with order imbalances on the gray chart. So we want to set market profile up first, then we want to let market delta pull us in. Now what we want to do, the first thing we're going to do is establish trend though. There's only two things the market can do every day in any market you trade. I don't care what market you trade, whether it be stocks, forex, currency, uh, it doesn't matter, futures. You got to look at the overall trend. It's either going to go up, right? It's going to go vertical, up, down, or it's going to go sideways, meaning it's going to be trend or it's going to be chop. The market can only do two things every single day. So it makes it easy for us to identify which side of the market we want to be on. Typically, the traders I've seen, I've trade hundreds, if not thousands of traders over the years. And what I've seen that traders fail is they try to counter -trend trade the overall setup, and meaning they try to fade, the, fade against the overall trend. We only look for trend retracements right around, I mean, trend retracements are about 80 to 85% of our trades. We only have a counter trend trade around 15 to 20% of the time. And I'll show you how to do that too. But if you want to look at the overall trend setup, the best way to do it is is three out of five trading days, you typically get trend markets. So the best way is this magenta MA. If it's angled up, if we're angled up, meaning the angle of the magenta, that's my longer term MA, moving averages. We don't use moving averages for support and resistance. We use it for trend direction. But if it's angled up, then what we want to do is we want to buy and sell trend retracements. What the market likes to do is it likes to rotate. It's called a market rotation. Now, if you have any market experience or any internal market trading like I did, I was a small order execution trader before. I traded up against the uh, top institutions in the world. And when I traded in between market profile, I knew the market was in a balanced market. A balanced market is when the market stays in between high value and low value. This is where it's very balanced. What happens is, is when the market gets outside of red or outside of green, it becomes out of balance. That's when you're going to catch a lot of wrongly positioned traders, and that's where you're going to see some speed in the market. So what you can see, the trend was up. So if my trend is up, my natural, my natural trade is going to be this. I'm going to break either through the control point, retest for an ABC long, come in with a couple ticks, look for a positive market delta on the gray chart. Or we're going to break through high value, get through it, retest within a couple ticks. It can break through it. It just can't, body of the candle close cannot close below it. The body of the candle, not the wicks, the wicks are the white, it can break through it. It just can't, the body of the candle close, you don't want to see it close all the way through it. So you can see, we, here's a break retest over here, it broke retested right here. Even though it got below the volume, you see it right on top of our, our profile right there, on our, our longer term profile HVA. So that's going to be our overall trend setup. These are two qualified setups. That's a buy setup. 
That's a buy setup. There's your positive market delta over here to pop you in on the first retest. But that's the rotation of the market. When you get, I mean, if you're in an uptrend, you're looking for a break, retest, wall. Break, retest, wall. Now, the reason we have the white chart over here is to add confluence. The only time I really concentrate on the white chart over here on the white chart is if I'm getting inside or outside of this red level or green level. This profile is calculated different. It's called developing profile. It's going to tick as the market moves. And it's the only way that I'm going to counter trend trade the market is if I get back inside of this red or green line and this black line and I take the first retracement. If I don't do that, I'm always trend retracing, meaning what happened is on this last breakout right here, it broke out. It's above high value area. Here's your first retest. Here's your second retest. Look how I have confluence on this chart with this black chart. I'm outside of high value. So it's catching all the rolling position traders that are short high value. So I use this chart, these two charts, to actually set the trade up. And then I use the market delta chart to fire myself in the trade with a positive market delta. Positive market delta is the green close right there. 378, anything over 200 on crude oil is a major buy imbalance. Now what happens after you get in on that retest of HVA, two times confluence there, three times with this high value area. So it's three times, almost four times confluence long. If you get in at the close of this green market delta bar, there's your, you open it up at the close of this green bar. If the next bar, if it closes red, you get out with a small loss. And this is what separates my traders from a lot of traders around the world because we do not hold our trades very long if it has no momentum when market delta gives us a buy or sell imbalance. This market, our market profile should pick up the exact buy and sell of the inflection point on a daily basis on the highest probability trade that we have. The only thing we can do is put ourselves in a position to win. And the only time you want to pull the trigger is a break retest of these profiles because that's putting ourselves in the best position to win because we know that we're possibly going to catch the wrong position traders because that's volume profile. So we know a lot of traders short high value. So once it breaks out, we look for a natural break rotation retest and it should go higher. Retest, go higher. Now I like to take the, only the first two tests of a market profile retest. The second test, the third test is too dangerous. I don't like to take it. So your first two tests of market profile is going to be your best time to take the trade. Period. Okay? So we had trend up. Your trend's up. High values here. The natural rotation is a break, retest, long. Now, let me show you yesterday's trade also so you understand what I'm talking about. Same exact trade we had yesterday. Exactly the same. If you look at it, it was off the control point, though, yesterday, off of the QM. Now, I told you I gave you special settings on the QM. What's the relationship between the QM and the CL? Well, the CL is the big contract. The QM is a micro. I told you to put, I start profiling the QM at 7.30 in the morning. I gave you the exact parameters that you should be putting on the QM. If you do not have those parameters, email Gerald and he'll send those parameters out to you. I gave them to all members last week. Those QM parameters are very important because it launches the, the, it launches the CL just like the, Q, just like the CL will launch the QM. So the beautiful thing about profiling the QM at 7.30 instead of 24 hours a day, the QM is very illiquid. I only like to profile my volume profile during volume sessions, which are around 7.30 to 2.30 on the QM. So my parameters will catch that. Now, here's what happened yesterday on our big launch on, on, on crude yesterday. It's the same trade. Look at our, the first thing you do is look at the trend filter. Is the trend filter up? Yes. Look at my angle of my moving averages. We don't use moving averages for support and resistance. We use them for trend direction. Moving averages are absolutely worthless. You cannot trade off of them for crossovers, support and resistance. You don't know which one it's going to stop at. Okay, so if it's in an uptrend, then we want to look for a rotation up. Let it break out, hit the high value, rotate back down. It test, tested the control point, which is most volume is traded. That was our positive market delta. It was over 500 order imbalance yesterday morning also on my market delta. 
it launched crude, it stopped to the exact tick, and it just launched. That's a $500 trade potential per one contract, and your maximum risk on any trade on crude oil and gold is $150 per one contract. But we place our stop two ticks above the swing high or swing low after entry. So on this last trade on crude oil here this morning here, and this trade here yesterday, your stop loss is two ticks below the swing. Your average stop should be around $130, if not $120, $120 per trade because per one contract. Because that is the most that we're going to subject ourselves to risk is two ticks below or below the swing low. Our market profile should generate that trade, and it should, re it should rotate off that market profile. If it does not, let it stop you out at a small loss. So there's two ways you're going to stop yourself out. Getting in is the easy way. But it's pretty easy for us because we know a break retest the profile with trend. So we know how to do that. But if you get in here yesterday or here today, and you got positive market delta, there's two ways you exit. You first put a hard catastrophic stop of 15 ticks in with crude or gold. And then if once you get in and you enter at the close of the green bar, the next open, if it's, if market delta closes red, take a $70 loss, $60 loss, $50 loss. Take a profit if you're up, three tick profit, four tick profit, whatever it is. All right? We should stay green the first couple bars, at least two, three bars going into it. Here's four bars right here. That's a good little order confirmation. One, two, three, four, market delta. So that's one way you exit. And the second way you exit, if it just closes green and then it hits your stop two ticks below the swing low, let it stop you out. We don't risk more than $120, $130 on a trade. You do not want to do that. Okay? So that's how we do things. These are the two setups, like I said uh, yesterday. And you both can recognize that is off market profile. Yesterday, before I shut this video off, this is a rejected area. I love rejected areas. I love if trend is up, I want to catch counter trend traders because counter trend traders are novice traders. They know nothing how to how, how to trade the market. They know nothing about the markets because they continually get continually get stopped out in the market according to Active Trader when it was published and stocks and commodities. Around 85 to 90 percent lose, and a lot of them are counter trend traders. So we know they're short the control point because it bounced off the control. That's called a rejected area. Once it breaks, retests that control, that should be a launching point. That was a trade setup. Then we come up here yesterday also on this break retest of high value area. Look how this is the exact same volume profile setup that happened today. Look here on the volume profile, exact same setup. Break retest of high value. There it is. Break, retest, high value with trend. Broke, rotated, came down and tested it, positive market delta. Look at it yesterday. Same exact setup. These are the exact same setups. You don't have to reinvent the wheel every day, right? Try to find a new trading technique. You're trading the internals of the market. That's the exact same setup. It broke out a high value area. Look at my rejected area. Now, it's the same exact setup. Watch. That's a rejected area. Oops. Here's a rejected area there. Look at the launching point from the rejected area. Right here. See the launching point that's rejected off high value, rejected off high value, broke, retested the rejected area off high value, went up. Look at it right here. Broke and rejected off high value. I mean control point, broke out of control point, hit the rejected area, exploded. This has been working for over 31 years or more in my market profile. It's the same exact way. Now, my market profile is totally different than all these other market profiles. I do not calculate 24-hour market profile. So when you get all these other market profiles, they're not going to come up at the same levels as mine because they're not as accurate. You cannot trade the standard market profile, 30-minute market profile. All these traders around the world are doing that, and they're doing it incorrectly because you cannot trade volume that's not needed in the market. You, if I take out the unnecessary volume and only calculate the volume that's necessary that I find is good for support and resistance. And that's automatically calculated in all markets. All right? 